viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel guys a 1988 you heard it right folks 1988 Chevrolet it's the S10 four wheel drive three pedals two sticks and the big 2.8 and uh, it's got some drivability issues she's a mint southern truck as I'm told and it has a new engine in it it's got a Jasper engine somebody put in some some time in its life it's got the vice grips uh, he's throwing a lot of parts at it his complaint is after you drive it for a while uh, really really high idle runs like poo you got to shut it off and wait about 10 15 minutes and then you can go again um, he's done a lot of things a coolant sensor map sensor throttle body injectors and thermostat and plugs wires cap rotor coil you know all this stuff all the parts you can throw including the vice grips on the air pump and uh, now we have to find out what's really wrong with it I was just a young buck when these trucks came out it's the backcountry edition super rare option folks so let's uh whew, it's got a fragrance to it i got the scan tool uh that works with this thing which is great it's got one of these things one of those no airbag so let's go for a ride the best thing to do is probably collect some data here which i'm gonna do sounds like it's idle and high already but it is stone cold let's see if this thing still works Oh, she's got a little stumbly bumbly there. I want to look at some data and see if there's anything that really jumps out to me. So our data is live. Looks like our O2 is not even moving at all. I see that right initially and it is in closed loop. Oh, uh, let's see. Your block learn on old GMs is like your, um, uh, what do you want to say there? It's like your fuel trim, 128 being the norm, being zero. Our O2 sensor is probably a single wire, so it probably takes a little bit for it to warm up. Really, really slow data response. <laughs> but I just kind of, I'm just gonna go through and poke here. There's not a lot of data, so there's not a ton of things to look at. I would think map voltage would be a little bit lower than that. But this is pretty much all there is to look at. Not a lot to look at here, folks. It's back in open loop. I'm gonna let it warm up and we're gonna get a baseline and we'll go for a rip. Well, it's been just a few minutes here, but I think, I'm thinking this O2 sensor is deader and dead. Um, how do we speed up this scale here? Well, we'll look here, maybe push the scale button. I don't know. Maybe it push the plus button. There we go, we'll speed her up a little. But even holding the RPMs up, I mean, you can see it's just staying dead. Like I say, it's probably just a single wire, but I would think that would heat up by now. Even though it's still an open loop, I still would expect, you know, giving this some beans for that O2 sensor to come to life. But it does say it's running lean. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, because the O2 sensor is below 450, which is kind of weird. I'm wondering if we just got a big old giant vacuum leak. And that's what's causing his fast idle and erratic running. Uh, I guess he did the uh, did the fuel pump and all that stuff already, too. I think he's changed all the parts he could change, uh, perhaps even an O2 sensor. I don't remember him saying that, but... That's usually first on the list of drivability complaints for people. Before we even go for a rip, I see that we can't even hit closed loop and the O2 sensor appears to be just flatline. And even if we're giving it some beans, we're gonna give her some juice. I wanna see if the O2 even has the ability to respond. So we're gonna kind of force a rich condition. see the O2 sensor budget. So that gives me some concern right from the get-go. Oh man, 
Does that bring back memories right there or what, boys, huh? <laughs> oh, I just want to drive around and be a jerk now. Ah, the good old days. Um, being that our O2 sensor doesn't even seem responsive, and that's going to be a key player in an old uh, system like this as far as one of the feedback sensors. Let's find it. Let's just do a bypass test on the wire because it should be just a single wire sensor, I'm assuming, or maybe three wires. I don't know where it is, but we'll find it rest assured and uh, check out that circuit first and then we'll go from there. What would you have a look at this filly? Dude, she's mint. I mean, yeah, it's got some wiring issues and things like that, but this thing's nicer than most 2018s I work on, <laughs> rust wise. Uh, yeah, she's pretty clean, <laughs> except for this. <laughs> I think that's the OG. Uh, probably not a lot of sense in testing this thing and there's probably good reason why this wasn't replaced or loaded into the uh, magazine of the uh, cannon so I guess first things first to see the wires all melted on her I wonder if it became a ground at some point and or it became something like this let's see does that make sense that makes sense hopefully it didn't become of a ground circuit when they put an engine in and forgot the ground hopefully it's not the case um, I guess what we could do and that is all melted let's see if she got some wires hanging down over here it's got a few bypasses on it I call it got the vacuum vacuum hose bypass action uh, about a one out of a hundred chance of getting that out of there. Is that any, uh, that's not a defouler, is that's part of that. Well, let me see if uh, somebody's got one of these old single wire jobbies and we'll uh, do some praying. Let's <laughs> see if we can get that out. A little harder to locate that than I thought. Uh, Napper, uh, both of them uh, near us, did not have them. Uh, the Fast Freddy's parts store, huge parts store, didn't have one. Uh, the Advance Auto, well, they had two. What's the matter, kitty kitty? Huh? Do you want to go inside? Huh, Luna? Come on. Come on, kitty kitty. Come on, see mommy. Hey. Come on. There you go. Place your bets. Uh, about a 99.69% chance she's probably not going to come loose. We'll get up on there. We'll give her a couple thumps, thinking maybe. Then we're going to give her a little bit of a push. Nothing there. Um, I wonder if we should throw a little heat on it. Tell you what, you stand by. I like the impacting action mostly for good moves, so we're going to try this again. A little steady push and some thumbs. No, I think she's going to fold the pipe up in a bunch of pieces if we do that again. Let's uh, heat a little. I do have a plan B. I don't really want to use it though. Didn't even make it to 10 o'clock in the morning, did we? Firing up the torch. First day back after Memorial Day. So we're just gonna go around and just yeah, check all that thing with a torch. She does feel pretty thin. We got a glower. Oh, baby. Must be she grew a little because uh, the wrench is a little snug now. You probably should switch sizes. Now it's moving, that's good, right? Went and grabbed me a 7 8 socket. Uh, 7 8 is slightly bigger 
then a 22. Look at that. Stand back, folks, because this thing's going to fall out now. Hey, what's up, Miss Phil? Is it? Is it uh, anybody important? Uh, they asked if you were available. They asked if I was available. Did you say no? He's married. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You didn't. You didn't tell him that. Okay. Oh, it's a dude. Oh, okay. Right. That was obvious. Whoa! There it is. Oh, she just broke, folks. She's a two-piecer now. So I'm just running an 18 mil thread chaser down through there now. I just want to make sure when we get the new one, the bungs are in a little better shape than I thought. So what I did for plan B, there we go, it's working pretty well. Uh, I ordered a, uh, a defouler too, you know, one of the fix my catalytic converter type defoulers. Because I figured if this thing was smoked, we could at least take a defouler, cut the bottom off it, and uh, cut this bung out, weld in a new one, but we don't have to now. So there we go, it's just a, uh, you know, thread chaser there. There she is. Look at that. I like a glove. We'll give it a little bit of a snug. And then uh, find the plugger here. We'll probably zip tie it up out of the way. Probably means we will. We're gonna just take a wire tie it up here. Actually, there's a little wire holder right there we're just clipping into. We just wanna keep it from getting all burned up. Again, actually we probably should zip tie it. Such a classic sound, the zip tie. So does that mean we fixed it? No, it doesn't. Uh, truth be told, we didn't even do a bypass test on it, so we don't even know if we're right. However, I've got a pretty good hunch, and if I'm wrong, I'll eat the O2 sensor. Uh, but we need to have a good uh, feedback signal from the O2 sensor to determine, you know, any other issues. So that's one of the big key players in this car. Ah, shoe fly! Um, pretty primitive system, but that needs to function. You know, I just saw this thing. <laughs> let, let me guess, there's probably no backlighting. Let's see. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no backlighting, but who needs backlighting when you got one of these little guys? Let's see, does it work? Boom. You don't need to know how fast you're going when you got one of those. Am I right? No problems, folks. Just solutions. Okay. We're gonna go back to data. We'll see if the O2 is working now. Already looking a little better here, isn't it? So we're gonna want, let's see, let's just go to cut. Let me get a custom display for us. So we've got our block learn, which is like your long term, your integrator, which is like your short term. I could be wrong on all that. And then we have our O2, our open closed loop, our coolant temp. I'm gonna let it warm up here for a little bit and see if our O2 comes to life. I'm just holding the RPMs up here, letting it warm up, and we can see that oxygen sensor starting to heat up. Okay, now we hit closed loop, we should start seeing some switching. Albeit slow, because I mean, these things only communicate at a certain speed. I don't even know what their baud rate is, but. Trust me, it's slow. <laughs> so we're not gonna get like this beautiful, you know, rich to lean transition that we're used to seeing. At least on uh, process data, we won't see it. But we should be able to see it over here. You know, we see our rich to lean switch. Well, we got some smoke coming up over here. <laughs> Must be the panther pee we sprayed on it. Cool. So now that we have a good feedback sensor, our O2 sensor is functioning and 
letting us know what's going on there, letting the PCM know what's going on so it can make its adjustments. Uh, I think at this point, just looking at our fuel trims, um, at this point I could take it for a little shake. Now he said he do have to drive this thing for some time, he said about 20 minutes before it would carry on and, and do its thing that it does. Where the idle would go super, super high, it would stall, um, just really run like garbage. This probably fixed it. Uh, at least we fixed a problem. So I'm going to do that. I don't have my tripod with me, but uh, I'll uh, go for about a 20 minute rip here. Um, it's 206 on this clock. It's a 1030 IRL, right? It's 1023. So I'm going to go for a rip. Tell you what, she's one smooth driving truck uh, for an oldie. Uh, appears to be working just fantastic uh, so far. Our, we're idling at about a thousand, between 950 and a thousand. It's bouncing, um, staying in close. Come on, guy! Um, yeah, everything seems to be working fine. And uh, it's 2.15 on this clock, so I don't know when we left. Because I got a short memory like that. But so far, so good, I'd say. All right, so it's doing what he says he did. Uh, see, it's 2.19 uh, on that clock. It's still in closed loop. We still have good feedback. Pretty interesting. Okay, well... We have a good O2 sensor now, but the car still broke. So what I'm thinking, I'm thinking he had, had or has two problems. Uh, the running like garbage problem was likely a result of the poor uh, oxygen sensor, the non-functioning O2 sensor. <laughs> We're, we got the cruise on right now at 40. Um, and I believe his high idle problem is, is a separate problem, which appears to be something with the IAC circuit, whether the computer's bad or the idle air control valve is bad. I don't know yet, but that's what we're going to find out. Uh, because he did say once it started doing this, it would run real poorly, uh, which it doesn't seem to run bad. It just has a really, really fast idle. So we're cruising back into town here. It is running poorly. And when I look at data, it appears to be running super lean. Uh, especially at full throttle, but there's a lot of other weird stuff. The coolant temp sensor is now stuck at 122. The map sensor voltage goes to zero and then to four and then back to zero. Uh, there's some weird things happening. It's really acting like a, you know, a PCM that's failing, but uh, let's go back and see if maybe this thing has a bunch of problems, perhaps. Oh yeah, come on baby, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Okay, we just made it. And it just died. Woo! That's some good luck right there, boys. That's weird. O2 sensor's pegged out. It says it's running lean. Well, now it says rich. Open loop. Idling super high. Low battery, yes. Huh. I don't know how much of this data I can believe. Like I say, when I was driving, the map sensor would do that. It would go right to zero. The uh, coolant temp would go to 300 and something. Okay, I need to turn the camera off here. TPS is at zero. This is starting to look more and more like a PCM that's getting overheated.
time to explain to you what I was doing there, folks, but uh, desperate times. Uh, I wanted to check it while it still broke. So quickly I did a voltage drop test, uh, make sure the engine wasn't losing a ground, and that was good. Check for AC ripple from the alternator, that was good. And while it was still broke, one thing we observed is that the map sensor was reading zero volts. I tried to show you that on the scan tool. So I quickly just back probed into the signal wire. Well, I went down through this, um, checked, did I have five volts, did I have a ground? What's my signal? Left it in the signal wire and you could see it was reading pretty steady at 1.45 volts. But when we looked over here on scan data, uh, oftentimes it was just at zero. So, and the TPS was at zero also. I wasn't able to probe that quickly. Oh, okay, you can see it's got a new idle air control valve. Um, I'm thinking we have a bad PCM. Uh, I don't even know where it is or what it looks like. But it's bad, I think. Maybe. Could be. Might be. So apparently the PCM lives under here. I see somebody's already had this pulled down. There's only, looks like a couple screws there that hold it in. So I grabbed us a seven and an eight. Looks like she's the seven variety. So we'll get this uh, thing taken out the rest of the way, see if we can find the PCM. And then I don't know what. We'll do something. So you trick my grandmother, Tommy. We took this baby out. What's up, Mrs. O? We on Facebook? Huh? We interrupting you? We need to borrow your freezer. Huh. Well, there's the answer right there I'm looking for. Just need some love. We'll be right back. I don't know if we're gonna go hug it out. No, we need to stick to it. Can you make some room for us here, please? Um, we're gonna, you don't have to save room for computers. We're gonna stick the old PCM in the freezer. Uh, she's pretty toasty right now. We're gonna cool it down, see if it fixes it. It's gonna be easier than circuit testing. Can you put that in there, please? Wherever you'd like it. And then, what's that gonna prove, Erico? Because the time has just passed. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in. If it runs great, we're gonna be like, oh wow, it runs great. And then we're gonna get, we're just gonna leave it idling over here in the shop and we're gonna get the, the blow dryer. And uh, you see what time it is? You know what time it is, it's 11.16. It's almost time for some brisket, brisket. sandwiches. <laughs> I know, man, that's, I think our other video we did there. Um, I guess down here if you like. So we made some ribs, uh, we smoked a brisket, not like, Smoked a brisket like that in a pit barrel cooker. Uh, not a sponsor. Why would you even think that? Why would you have to, Why do you think you had to clarify that? Because I don't know. Maybe there's people out there smoking briskets. Maybe that's what they call it nowadays. You know, hey man, you got some brisket? Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know what kids do nowadays, but uh, we smoked some brisket. Let me tell you what, boys. Woo! We did brisket. You're gonna have to work after you eat today. I know. We made some homemade onion rings. And then Kaiser buns with some sesame seeds, toasted, a little garlic butter, fresh brisket off the point, juicy, fat, greasy, amazing. And then layer that up, boom, a couple of onion rings, boom, some fresh cut dill pickles, boom, some Kansas City style barbecue sauce. I nice couldn't and smoky. hardly keep my eyes open after I ate that yesterday. I know, so. isn't that great? Uh, can we eat early so I can take a nap? Let's do it. I say we do. I vote. I vote yes for eating early. Uh, but that stuff should be illegal. We just got into the barbecue scene. And I tell you what, when I eat it, I get to like six or eight ribs. Not racks of ribs, six or eight ribs. And I'm just like, I think, I think I'm going to die. My heart races. I sweat. You, your skin feels greasy. And then you keep coming back for And you're more. just like, I'm never going to do this again. Eight hours later, what are you doing? Exactly, you know what I'm saying? Isn't it great? Yeah. You said you were going to skip breakfast this morning because you were having brisket for lunch. I did. I had two-piece toast. Boom. Didn't eat breakfast. That's not skipping breakfast. Yes, it is. And now I have one donut. Okay. Yep. Pretty much. Pretty much didn't have materials. <laughs> I think you would have been better off. All right. Part. We're out of here. <laughs> All right. Well, Mrs. O's preparing lunch. She's cold now to the point she's frosting over. I don't know if it's cold on the inside, but she's cold on the outside. I assume it's cold in there. So let's plug it in. So let's see if we got lucky. Let's see, baby. 
Oh, look at that, it runs normal now. Let's go get some data. I really dislike these videos where I'm holding the camera. Because I tend to do this, like, oh yeah, so we're gonna look at this right here, and I'm not looking at the camera. Okay, let's see, we're in open loop. I let it run here for a little bit. Uh, let's see, coolant's back to normal. That's not stuck at 122. Little battery says no. Map voltage is at where it should be, not stuck at zero. Okay, well, I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and I think we'll go get the heat gun and we'll uh, give that a little bit of heat and see if it screws up just sitting here. Well, she's pretty hot for the touch, boys. Yeah, she's, she's toasty. Um, I'll shut the old con air off here. And yeah, she's pretty hot. Gowser. Um, <laughs> stupid thing hasn't missed a beat. Everything seems to be functioning finally. We have a control valve, you know, O2 sensor, throttle position. Pretty interesting. Um, could be a pin fitment we had. You know, you never know. I just took an unplugger. But it is the OG, it looks like. You know, it doesn't have any reman stickers or anything on it. It's quite hot to touch right now. I would think. The circuit board in there would be good and warmed up. I suppose we could take the lid off for the prom chip and blow some heat directly on it, but I would think it would be it would be hot right now. Interesting, interesting, interesting. What we could do, if we still suspect that, we could go down to the uh, arrow mark there at the gas station, get a bag of ice, and put it on ice. In the words of the Beastie Boys, because right now. It's running like a champ. So either A, we're wrong, or B, we they had a pin fitment problem and we fixed it, which would be kind of bizarre, in my opinion. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is eat some brisket sandwich. <laughs> Think about working again, because the other variable is, you know, the hood's up. So there could be something under the hood that's getting smoking hot. But I can't think of anything under the hood that was going to go wrong that would have affected so many different things like uh, the coolant temp sensor, the throttle position, the map sensor, the idle air control. Everything was acting really silly. Um, the only thing I could think was just the engine ground, uh, AC voltage by the alternator, uh, which clearly wasn't the case. That's why I checked that initially. So I'm still really leaning. Uh, towards this little fella. I remember working on early GMs way back in the day and this was a kind of a classic symptom but I'm going back years folks. Years. I provided you a way to cheat. It didn't really work. Oh it didn't? Yeah no not like you think it would. Oh in my mind it worked well. Well that's it. There's a lot of things going on in your mind that don't always happen in real life. Yeah, like when I tried to tow some buns yesterday. Remember what happened? Small flames. <laughs> they minor were fire. A dark. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little on the black side. Uh -huh. Oh, these pickles are the bomb. I don't know if people say that now, but if you can get them at your local grocery, the Gilios, Grillos, whatever you want to call them, Grillos. Fantastic. Oh, the microwave. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> The microwave. The microwave. There's wow. the Maytag. That is like what we say when we go to the microwave. Is that what they do? What is this, a cooking show? Yeah, look at this. Got the smoke ring. Okay, that's the pink. Just a light smoke ring. Homemade onion rings with Planko. Oh, Mrs. O. Mrs. O's homemade broccoli salad. And your mother-in-law's potato salad. What's this? What? Who's this? That one's mine. You're going easy on yourself? No, I'm, I'm eating like deconstructed. Oh wow, a deconstructed sandwich. And who, oh this is your mom's mm -hmm. potato salad? Mm -hmm. 
Boom, what are you putting on there? Oh, Texas, who's eating the weak sauce? Your daughter. Oh, my daughter. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Poor Josh, he isn't gonna be worth the beans after he eats this lunch. <laughs> what does he care? He's like it's pain. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Let's see what the finished product looks like. Oh, this is all. Boy, that looks so yummy. They are so yummy. Okay, I'm gonna go prepare myself for some food coma. <laughs> you got all your work done? Almost. We got one left. <laughs> I'm gonna go loosen up my, my belt buckle. You don't get paid if you don't do it. <laughs> That's true. Thanks, Doesn't for, work right thanks that, for being so good to us. That way. <laughs> thanks, babe. Love ya. Hey, we love you too. All of us. Oh, it's 4.07 on that clock. I don't know why we need to know that, but we do. Uh, the, the lunch is over. I'm worthless. I'm gonna take it for a shakedown. We're gonna leave the PCM out here and see if it acts up at all and I'm just gonna keep some data up there a uh, pretty tough video to record we're just running the same route so far so good now we're just about to the area where it goofed up uh, before I was shortly past uh, the construction zone here maybe another mile or so and then it started acting silly uh, but so far so good I know you guys probably can't see anything there uh, but everything appears just fine idols good high exhibition good <laughs> sick <laughs> get some boy um, O2 TPS everything else is fancy so we'll see here in just a minute or so so I'm at the same spot where we pulled over before everything seems to be functioning as it should uh, the only difference is we have the PCM laid out on the floor. Looking at the data, everything's working good. O2 switching, TPS is staying steady, the map sensor is not dropping out to the zero volts, or the coolant sensor, the TPS, everything that was going kind of stupid before. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've worked on enough of these old ones, you know, way back in the day when I was just a young buck. Uh, this was a pretty common symptom that you would see not you know so much on the s10s but just gms in general when the pcms would fail and the data would just go haywire you know it's like yeah, none of this is making sense i'm feeling pretty confident saying hey you know you should probably put a uh you know put a pcm in this thing they're pretty inexpensive too so that would probably be the cheapest uh you know best educated assessment that i could offer him uh, based on the data that we've collected and, and what we've seen so far uh, nothing else really makes sense. Obviously, I'm going to go powers and grounds, make sure that's all good. But uh, other than that, I think that's where we're heading with this thing. I don't think we're going to make it back, boys. <laughs> Not this time, baby. Son of a gun. Awesome. But I don't want to get stuck in the intersection, so let's uh, pull over here. Not that it's a busy intersection, but... Now it's really... Yeah, it's really goofed up right now. Yeah, you can see the map sensors cutting in and out. Low battery, yes, we've got ever all the... I'm just gonna scroll through my list here real quick, but we've got all the telltale signs here. You know, the battery's obviously not low because we've already checked that. Our coolant sensor screwed up. IAC position is not for real. TPS is sitting at zero. I don't know if our O2 reading is good or not. You know, the integrator and the block learner both at 128, but it does say open loop. I guess we might be able to make it back, but yeah, the map sensor will, you know, keeps going to zero volts pretty continually. Looking like a pewter, boys. Oh, we're making it any pretty. I got her down in the number four, and I'm just letting it idle because we can't give it any throttle or it's going to die on us. We're almost there.
yeah, even key on engine off it's still going kind of wonky there as you can tell so that tells us it has nothing to do with charging voltage it has nothing to do with you know AC input from the uh, alternator our throttle position sensor is still sitting at zero and I guess what we can do being that it's broke key on engine off is do some tests right at the PCM so let me grab some wiring diagrams and we can verify you know what's the map doing what's the throttle position doing um, you know where's the coolant sensor sitting you know all that stuff can be measured you know right at the PCM shows our battery voltage is zero which is weird you know so we can do oh now the battery's back to 12.9 so maybe that's also doing the zero thing um, yeah it is okay gotcha so yeah so this is all stuff that we can check but uh, definitely leaning on that bad PCM so I've left the key on I left our battery voltage up here and the uh, map voltage I did get us a diagram she's kind of old school we got no color on it and we're gonna need a magnifying glass to see it so we've got that uh, I think what I'll do first thing first is we'll find the map sensor I'll see if I can find where that goes on here we'll back probe it and I'll also find the voltage supplies and stuff and if both of those are steady but the scan data is still screwed up and the car is still screwed up then I'm not gonna bother testing everything else that's not functioning so let me figure this out I'll find out where everything is and then we'll uh, do some simple checks there we go map sensor in reference voltage I get the right pins here so this should be our power so I'm just going to probe into that D1's over here there we go nice and bright light there pulling a, pulling a couple amps off that so we're we're satisfied with that scan data is still goofed up still toggling you know between zero and I'll wait for it to pop up here 12.7 volts so there's our one battery voltage and then there's another ground on D6 which is supposed to be tan which is if this is D1 2 3 and that's D nice 3 4 5 6 so this is another ground right here so I'm going to probe into that one and you can see we got a nice bright light there if I can find the hole baby there she is so we've got good ground there also I think that is the only powers and grounds on that connector let me just double check so that's ground one ground two battery and that's it there and we've got another ground on the small connector black with red on B3 so that's this ground right here we probe it nice and bright light so that's good let's find if there's anything else I don't see any other grounds there so those are the three grounds and then we do have another battery which is orange on B1 which is going to be this little fella right here and then we'll go back to that ground that we just checked we know it's good if I can find it and there it is and we have a nice bright light so we have uh, it appears that we have all of our powers and grounds and then we have a memory power which I don't think we're super concerned with uh, and there's another ground red black red white a12 black with white a12 so that's going to be this pin right here this very last one so we will check that very last ground by going like this and then we'll probe the known good power that we have we'll probe it with our high amperage side here there's that and nice spray there there so that should be all the powers and grounds let me find the map signal here stand by folks okay, talk to mrs. over there for a second okay let's find the map and uh, let's see map in C11 light green it's gonna be on the big connector we got some is this number 11 so we got 16, 15, which is empty, 14, 13, 12, 11. I think it's this one here. Just double check that. Is that number 11? That should be number 11. So now 
now that we know our grounds are good, we can use one of the grounds. Right, yeah, actually, I think there may even be a uh, signal. There may be a sensor ground here. Let me just check this here, folks. I thought I saw ground reference voltage to PSN. Okay, so we're going to use one of our grounds. Uh, this black with white here was a ground, so we will ground into it. I just want to make sure on scan date everything's still screwed up and it is. So we're going to ground into that, and then we're going to check the 5 volt supply, which should be this gray wire. That's 5 volts. So uh, I know you guys can't see it here, but we have a steady 5 volts. Now, this 5 volts feeds the TPS and it feeds the map. So that tells me, like, hey, fella, we're good. I'm going to probe number 11 here, which was light green. And we have 4.63 volts on scan data. Now, I got to remind myself what light green was. I know we were going for it, which was uh, pin C11, which is map sensor in on our scan data. You can see our map sensor is going crazy. It's still up, down, up, down. But on an IRL, you can see we're at 4.63 as far as actually making it to the computer. And we have a steady five volts there, uh, which is good. And then let's just check one other thing here. So, cause there's really not, not much sense of checking anything else. Um, and our purple wire, let's just see where that goes. Sensor return is in the other connector, A11, and it's purple. A11, that's right next to the ground that we're plugged into. We're gonna plug into the actual sensor ground and make sure that it's nice and steady. Typically, if you would have lost the sensor ground or a sensor return, uh, as they call it on this, your voltage would go high, it wouldn't go low. So right now we're plugged into the map sensor uh, ground wire and the signal wire and key on engine off we're at 4.63 which would be barometric pressure which is good although on scan data it's going stupid. Uh, therefore that tells us that the PCM is junk. There is one other thing I think I wanted to check here we did the grounds, we did the battery, the reference voltage, the other ground, we did that battery. Yeah, the only one we didn't check is the memory memory power, uh, which is A6, and um, that's pink with black, A6, which is pink with black right here. Uh, we can do that real quick like a bunny. It's not really gonna be a make or break it deal here. And we'll probe into the ground, this black with white ground, and we can see our, our cam power, our keep alive power is good. So there's really nothing more to see here, folks. Um, oh wow, it's saying, oops, you just missed it. It was just saying that our battery voltage was 25 volts just moment, moments ago. There it is, 25.5 volts is what the battery voltage is. So something's definitely wonky inside of here. Maybe we'll give her some of these. Hey! Give it, give it a sniff. But honestly, all it smells like in here is mouse piss and cinnamon. But uh, yeah, the voltage is all screwed up now on here. And all the other sensors keep switching to zero. So, and our RPMs are at 1,900. Pretty good. Coolant's still at 122. We can make sure, or I don't know if by tweaking on the circuit board here, if it'll correct things or not. It doesn't really seem to be changing how the map is reading, or the battery voltage for that matter. Even if I play with the connectors, it still seems pretty repetitious. That's the only thing we can do is throw it back in the freezer, but at this point, I'm gonna make the call. It needs a PCM, see if he wants to fix it. So the big dilemma here is, uh, how do you know it's the PCM and not the prom in the PCM? Well, and ask me that question. Okay, you just asked me the question. I don't know, I'm not a genius. 
I think the, oh man, brisket. I think the the best solution here would be, is the whole hold the one stone, kill the two birds thing. And by that I mean, can we find a used PCM? Getting a prom chip for this is out of the question. The PCM I believe is mostly just the hardware. The prom chip I believe stores, you know, the, the data, the software for the hardware. You know which one of them's going wonky well we can handle this a couple ways which may we you know we could get the pcm from uh napa uh who doesn't sponsor us uh they could get it for us kansas is playing i got some dust in the wind crank and i want to get demonetized um so we could get the pcm from them we could put it in put the prom chip in with the possibility of having the same problem you're second guessing yourself you don't know what to do or we could try to source a used PCM and hopefully have the same prom, prom in it and either have a different problem or cure the whole problem that we have together, if that makes sense. Finding stuff uh, for vehicles this old around here is pretty tricky. Uh, these things have long been since been in the crusher. I mean, this is these things have been gone for 20 years since we've seen cars like this. Um, so let me do some looking. I'll see what I'm going to do. You guys are going to have to stick around because it could be some time before we get something. Uh, that's all I got to say to you. So we'll end it right here. This will be part one of the Chevrolet S10. It says Tahoe on the dash. Chevy S10 Tahoe. I'm like a dog. I get distracted easily. Uh, so that will be it for the 1988 Chevrolet. It's the S10, the 2.8. You guys know what to do. Comment sections, questions, concerns, Insta, Facebook. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Y'all ain't gonna believe this. Wilbur Cupel the Bath had a PCM out of a 1991 Chevrolet. It was a Blazer, but it was a 4.3. Correct hardware, incorrect uh, prom chip. So I took the, this is our OG, pop the prom and maybe knock information off this one i don't know what the other module is or before my times folks swapped them over the hardware though is different so now we got to take it for a shakedown and see do we have the same problem or at least maybe a different problem or is the problem fixed what are the freaking odds of that am i right my guy 1991 blazer down there stripped from one end to the next but i had the pcm in it oh and i stole some stuff i stole two of the screws that hold the little plastic thing on underneath so we can put this guy's plastic thing back where it belongs. Let's ride. I don't know if you can hear me, but while I'm driving along, I'm just looking at the map sensor. So I just picked one of the sensors that starts going crazy. That way I can just have a little look-see over it in. Tried to pull over here in the shade so you guys could see what I'm seeing. But like I say, so far so good. And we certainly have never made it from this area uh, of our test drive back to the shop. So I'm gonna stay here for about another minute and then peel out. Well, we made it back to the construction zone, no problems. I think we might have got it, folks. This is farther than we've ever gone before. I think we have success, fellas. Oh, you can't see crap anyway, so wait till we get back to the shop, but she ain't skipped a beat. She's running steady, my guy. All right, perfect. Uh, we went all the way, we did our full route that we've done before, and, and this time we made it back alive, and we didn't do any of the skipping and bucking and dying halfway back, or where we turned around. And uh, I pulled over again, just to let it kind of idle and just really heat soak. Uh, nothing's changed much today as it's gotten progressively later in the day as it does each and every day as you know the world turns and time goes on. It's gotten hotter, it's about 90 out today. Um, it's, it's smoking hot so everything under the hood that we haven't touched there's no variables out there that we have to worry about this is the only thing we've meddled 
uh, with, and it's what I first suspected right from the get-go after we had a working O2 sensor. Uh, so that's it. There's really nothing more to see. We proved it out with uh, just using our meter and looking at scan data, seeing what the computer's seeing. Uh, there's probably some kind of voltage regulator in there that's going wonky is my assumption the way it was turning on and off. A lot of you electronics guys will probably know what's happening there. I'm not an electronics guy uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, I can tell you, yeah, the box is bad. I'm not going to tell you what's in the box that's bad. Um, but that's that. So anyhow, so much for part two. Thanks to Wilbert Chupol the Bath for not sponsoring us and for having a 1991 blazer down there. What the heck? Why is that still there? I don't know. Maybe we're just living right, folks. So we'll catch you around.